long history for it, so um, Americans willing to place blame on somebody else. Um, Americans are always looking for somebody to place the blame on after any tragedy happens. I was inspired by the story as a participant and attitudes towards women, women towards Muslim women in the West. Um, in the story as a participant, I use the idea that even though first-hand accounts might, might not always be accurate of the historical events that happened, they do show how people were feeling at the time and who people view it as wrong and right. And attitudes towards Muslim women in the West, I use that as the fact that uh, media can distort the images of certain cultures and Americans don't really know uh, cultures and what they are. Um, for some background about why people uh, place blame on people is this thing called implicit bias. Everybody is born with it, and it's just this unconscious bias that we're born with um, that forms throughout our lives. And most people don't realize that it's there, but it heavily impacts our decision making. Um, another form of implicit bias is confirmation bias, which is the unconscious tendency to find information or facts that support your already existing beliefs, even though that there might be evidence in the contrary. Uh, my first example is that in J Japanese internment camps, uh, after Pearl Harbor, belonging to Pearl Harbor, um, it was one of the first attacks on American soil, so a lot of people went into a frenzy. And because the bombers were Japanese, they forced all the Japanese Americans into these internment camps and made them move their homes and their jobs. And a historian of this Graham said that some 112,000 Japanese, two thirds of them American citizens, were sent to internment camps where they spent much, in some cases, all of the war. Um, it just shows that the government was willing to send their own citizens into these camps um, because of looks. And the images of the Japanese were skewed by the media, made, making them look sinister and murderous. Um, my second example is the Vietnam War. Uh, Vietnam War was known as the first televised war. After the, uh, it was the first time that technology was advanced enough for people at their homes to be able to see pictures and videos of the war that was happening overseas and most of the people did not like what they saw. So when the Vietnam veterans came home from the war, they were greeted with a lot of disapproval. And um, the, in some cases, they were spit on or called baby killers, but in most cases, they were just ignored. Um, and they were blamed for a war that they did not start. Um, as you can see in the graph, um, this red line shows the, or the blue line, this is the start of the war, and the blue line shows how many people thought it was not a mistake to send uh, troops over in Vietnam, but as the war continues, you can see that the red line uh, increases into how many people think that it was a mistake to go into the war. Um, the most recent example is the attacks of 9-11. This is when Islamophobia first uh, started to grow, which is a fear of Muslims. And um, people view all Muslims as terrorists now, as uh, Boo Lughood wrote, um, when Americans see the burqa, they don't see a portable seclusion or a mobile home. They look at it as something that they're forced to do and as part of terrorism. Um, as you can see in this graph, before 2001, there was little to not, no hate crimes against Muslims, but as you can see in the year of 2001, there's a huge increase and spike in uh, crime against Muslims. And even though uh, after 2001, uh, the crimes decreased, they are still much higher than they were before the uh, attack. And it just shows how um, Americans' views will always be changed of Muslims. Um, some solutions are to focus more on the problem instead of the people. Uh, we need to fix, um, fix, start working towards fixing the problem and not looking at people to blame for it. Um, another one is stop looking a whole group to a tragedy. Just because the people that created the tragedy doesn't um, doesn't mean you have to lump everyone that looks like them or acts like them or has the same religion as them to this same tragedy. Some limitations, however, is that people will always have this unconscious bias. They will always be born with it, and especially children now being raised in a world where this already prejudice exists. It's hard to escape from it, and it's becoming their reality now. Um, and a 
I'm not only a patient if it only takes a few people to get many people rallied against something. If a few people can convince many that if they can find facts that support what they're saying, even though they might not be true, people will uh, support them, mm -hmm. even though it might be based on fact, fact, false accusations. This is all exciting. Okay, one question for you, Jordan. <clears throat> um, how did your research question evolve as you moved through the research process, and did your research go in a different direction than you had originally planned? I uh, guess to begin with, I had my research question more involving just how people react after uh, violent events happen after they witness that. Um, but that was kind of broad, so I focused it more on Americans uh, because I had some background knowledge already of uh, these events in history, and then I focused it more on how they blame, not how they react, um, and why they blame. 